Sometimes to stop a threat, you're gonna have to take a precision shot with not a perfect backstop. Welcome to today's active self-protection lesson. I'm your host, John Correa. Today's lesson comes to us from Tulsa, Oklahoma in the United States. It's a badge cam of one of the best and most switched on cops I've ever seen. Whether in dry fire or in live fire, the Mantis X firearms training system really helps you to get better every day with your defensive shooting. I use mine all the time. Go read the news story linked in the description. The call on this one is an active shooter at a pizza joint and the police show up and that's what they've heard over their radios, active shooter. We have badge cam on this one, a lot of lessons to come, but let's listen in. <laughs> George 303, I'm in the alley behind the strip mall. Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? What's the, what restaurant is this? This is CC's. This is CC's. Like, Watch out. Hey. Watch out. Clear the door. CC's Clear. is clearing out. I'm at the back door. Officer coming. Come on. What does he look like? We don't know. They just shoot random. He's at Cox. Uh, people are yelling and saying that he's down at Cox. I think he's at Cox. Down that way. He was coming. Jimmy Wynn's one of those shots. I'm not sure if it's a dog or the one or the... But he was shooting people down there. We have a ton of people in the alley right behind the shopping center. And we definitely have one person shot. Looks like in the chin. Uh, Roll Emsa. He's in the um, Range Rover on the south side of the complex. Old traffic, old traffic, he's got a gun. Okay, suspect is down. Stay on the ground! Stay on the ground, let me see your hands! Let me see your hands! News stories linked in the description said the officer's fire was accurate. Those two shots put him down and he took the asphalt temperature challenge. Officers were fine. No one else after the officers got on scene were hurt. And that is where this one ends. Boy, incredible stuff there by that officer. Lots of lessons for us to learn here. If you want to get better with your handgun skills and even more with your carbine, join us at the Active Self-Protection National Conference September 27, 28, 29 at Tallgrass Shooting Sports outside of Manhattan, Kansas. There's a link in the description with all the details. It's 100% a fundraiser to help abused, abandoned, neglected foster teens, and we will get an entire weekend of amazing training with some of the best trainers in the industry. Hit the link, join us. I guarantee you, you will have a great time and do good work doing it. Out of today's video, I want to think about how crazy real life defensive encounters can be, particularly with firearm safety. I also want to think about the incredible importance of marksmanship and why we say sometimes physical fitness is incredibly important to your ability to stop a threat.
Start talking about the chaos of an active shooter here is that this officer has his rifle. I think that's an absolute right choice. If I know I'm going towards a gunfight, I'd much rather have a carbine with me than a pistol any day of the week. But now let's think about what he's doing here is that he is pieing things and trying to see, okay, wait a minute. I may have to fill somebody in here right now. And so he has got that rifle in a ready position and he's running at the same time, which is pretty amazing. Now notice here what he's got to deal with in terms of threat assessment is I can see probably a dozen people in this alley who have all piled out of the back of this restaurant where somebody has been shot because of course they're worried they pushed away from where the problem was and but but officer doesn't know that he just knows where the problem is coming from so being able to identify what's going on quickly being able to think with a gun in your hand and think who needs to get shot and who doesn't incredibly important and practice adequate firearm safety as well now we see this here and we might say oh okay wait a minute why is the officer pointing a gun at people who in uh, the end of things didn't need to get pointed i want to point out something important here that when you're looking at a badge cam this badge cam is not sitting up on the officer's shoulder and it's certainly not sitting at eye level it's sitting in the middle of his chest so you can't see what he's pointing the firearm at, okay? You can see in the general direction, but he can depress that muzzle just far enough that he can see over the top of it and not endanger anybody. This is why you take a quality carbine class so you know what a proper low ready looks like where you're not endangering anyone and practicing the rules of firearm safety. And I'm sure that's what this officer is doing here because then he, he drops that muzzle even further and now he's gonna go through and see what the heck is going on and get through this restaurant. Now, communicate. He's trying to figure out who's what, when, and where, who needs to be, you know, uh, dropped here, who needs to be dealt with. Now, of course, he says, look, there's somebody inside this restaurant who's been shot. I can't actually identify who that is, but we know somebody's been shot. However, that's not the officer's problem. He'll leave that for EMS. Go deal with the person who's killing people. And that's exactly what goes down. Now, you notice he is running here like crazy. He's jogging some and then running some. He finally gets some more better intel as to where this guy is in just a second. But this is where physical fitness comes in and is important. To be able to make this jog and then run this hundreds and hundreds of yards, five, six, seven hundred yards, and then take accurate fire requires fitness, friends. And, and listen, everybody knows, you know, I, I've lost 60 pounds or so in the last year, whatever. It's something I'm continually working on as well. But recognize you may have to take a good shot after a significant physical exertion. So the better physical fitness that you have, the better job you can do of that. So I can't recommend physical fitness enough for all kinds of fights. Now, interesting stuff that we've got going here is the officer's got to come up, sees this guy actively shooting at people on the other side of the road and takes this first shot. Now you can just see the, the nose of a car. And I know some folks who are like, holy cow, that was a dangerous shot. Yes, but he's killing people. So people are actively dying because this guy's winging shots off down the interstate, shooting at passing cars. Sometimes you're going to have to take shots where your backstop is a very thin slice and things change in a hurry and you're going to have to do that. That's why, how these things go, which is why I think in our police force, yes, we want people who can discriminate. Yes, we want people, you know, discriminate who needs to be shot and who doesn't is what I mean by that. Yes, we want guys who can, you know, deescalate conflicts, but sometimes we need warriors who are willing to absolutely put shots on target in small windows and have that marksmanship. Now this marksmanship feat here was across six lanes of traffic and four shoulders. And he put two shots on that guy at about 40 yards. Actually, if you look at it, you know, six lanes and four shoulders is about 102 to 112 feet. So about a 35 yard shot that said, 35 yard shot with a red dot equipped carbine not exactly humongous marksmanship challenge unless you've been running for 600 yards and it's real life and the backstop is crazy so this officer is a stud in my opinion now i want you to notice as well here that again he's got that muzzle depressed okay and that's fine and that's good but that marksmanship standard you better be able to hit that and if you're going to carry and, and, and have as a patrol officer have a carbine with you you better be able to hit that shot and he did and i think that's great notice his partner here as well that's a little bit better angle so you can see see here what looks like he's got that gun up actually the muzzles depressed quite a bit so that they're not violating the rules of firearm safety and i think that's important so this officer here i think should be extolled for his virtues number one physically fit number two good thinker with a firearm. He was discerning who needed to get shot and getting to where he needed to go quickly. Number three, his marksmanship was absolutely on point. He got it done when he needed to in a very tough situation. He got that shot on target in a very tough backstop. He did a great job of protecting everyone in his community, and I think he deserves an award for it. He certainly covered all of our ASP.